Mike Owens here, joined today in Las Vegas, and then he's at Austin, Texas, because that was the last time we spoke <laughs> by Cody Brundage, who returns to action, UFC 300, facing Bo Nickel. Cody, how are things, my man? I'm great, bro. Getting close now, and it's been a long camp, so it feels good to finally get to the moment. Does fighting on UFC 300 mean anything extra to you, or is this just another fight? I mean, for sure. You know, it's a super historical card, and then... You know, I've been following the sport. I was a fan before I ever started fighting. So to be a part of 300 is, is very special. Um, and at the same time, you know, it's my ninth fight in the UFC. I feel like I'm more of a, a vet. You know, I've had quite a few fights, ups and downs, of course. But, uh, you know, try to not make the moment too big. But, yeah, it's definitely a special one. We talked about the list a little bit off camera, and I think everybody knows the question that's coming. But there's been a lot of backlash online, let's say. But maybe backlash is a strong word, but a lot of let's say, negativity online about you, with your placement on the cards. Just give me your reaction to that. Do you feel like that is fair? Do you feel like that's overreacted? Just give me your overall assessment of, of maybe the, the, the public outlash. Um, you know, I feel like maybe it's fair, right? Like, if you look at who's on the card and how decorated they are, like, you know, Bo, Bo is a relatively unknown character and then you know based off my performances i've been pretty inconsistent in the ufc so i could see where there would be some backlash but the only response you know is me and bo have no we didn't go to dana and say you better put us on the main card you know that didn't happen right uh and you know it is they're trying to build stars they're, they're a little short on stars right now so you know trying to put bo on there and, and showcase him i'm aware of what it is right it's a great opportunity for me but it is a showcase for bo and uh it makes sense if you really think about it and then the other piece is you know, if if we're on the main card, that means you're getting a fight that you think should be on the main card for free. So I don't really see why people would be that upset about it, you know, because it's, it's really putting a, a fight that you deem as a better, more competitive fight on on free TV for you. So, uh, you know, people are always going to have something to say. People will always uh, not be happy with what it is, you know, just be happy with what it is and, and enjoy the fights. I completely agree. Uh, I think I checked before we jumped on. I think there's less than 10 minutes of pro fight time for you to study on Bo. What have you seen in what is a very, very short and very, very quick run so far? Oh, uh, you know, he's been dominant. Uh, I feel like he's pretty similar, not, not similar in maybe his style or technique, but like, Similar that he's run through everyone he's fought, just like the guy I fought last, you know, and so there's not a ton of film. And, and when there's not a ton of film, you know, I, I feel like there's a good idea of what he's going to do, right? He's very explosive. He's going to throw hard to close distance and get to his bread and butter, which is which is wrestling. And uh, I'm aware of that, you know, and, and you can only be aware of, of what someone's going to do. You can't be like, I'm going to stop everything they do or, you know, then you start overthinking. And when you're overthinking, you're dead in the cage. So, you know, it's just uh, I've watched what he's done. I, I feel like, you know, picked up on a few things, but there's not, like you said, there's not a ton of film. So it's more just focusing on myself and, and growing and continuing to get better and then how can I win this fight as opposed to how can I not lose the fight you know so uh yeah I've, I've studied this film like you said there's not a ton to see but I, I feel like I have a good idea of what he's what he's bringing to the table who's been the guy mimicking Bo in the gym for you for this camp uh, so I brought in a couple uh high level wrestlers you know I brought in Garrett Leinberger um he's a purple or brown belt and uh he's Sadiq Yusuf's wrestling coach uh and he was a two-time NCAA D2 national champ uh so it was good to have him in there and then Nick Maximoff who actually fought in my UFC debut, okay. Southpaw, really good wrestler, uh, good jiu-jitsu guy, you know, brought those guys in, and, and they kind of give me a, a realistic look in terms of, like, being relentless with their wrestling, going for a takedown after takedown after takedown. If you stay connected, it's problems. You know, no one – it's tough because no one can really mimic Bo Nickel, right? Like, he he's probably the the most – highly touted wrestler the UFC's ever ever had and uh you know obviously it's great so it's hard to find someone that can mimic that exactly but it's a good look in terms of like what is uh the pace of the fight what's the vibe been like in factory x for this fight because we talked when we last spoke in austin you reminded me that the brandon's brandon Royval's world title fight uh in 296 was the first world title fight of factory x's career or for the first world champion excuse me so what's the vibe been like in the gym because on the grand scheme in the grand scheme of things this is a massive fight for for you mark and, and the rest of factory x yeah you know factory x is awesome it's it's a family we're all really close you know we all train together there's not like little teams inside the the gym it's one big team and and i feel like that lends to excitement when when we get big opportunities like this and uh yeah everybody's hitting me up making sure i'm all good and and you know just let me know they're behind me and you know it's big you need that and uh I'm fortunate, and, and yeah, vibes are good. We got a lot of fights coming up, a lot of big fights coming up, and, and this is one of the first ones of the year that's really, really big, and uh, I feel the support for sure. I'm going to let the fans in on a little secret, but when Cody met me in the hotel lobby, uh, within about five seconds of us of us meeting each other, someone asked them to sign their hoodie and to take a photo with them. Has, has that increased throughout this week? Have you felt more love, more admiration from the fans? 
Uh, I don't know. You know, it's a, it's a double edged sword, right? Like half the people, uh, you know, I definitely feel like I have my fair share of haters, which is, which is fine. I'm sure everyone kind of feels that, but yeah, I've definitely, you know, there's been some hype around it and people are excited to meet you. And, you know, most of the people that meet you in person, I won't say most, every person I meet in person is super respectful and, uh, you know, and, and so like you can get it twisted sometimes because online people can be rude and, you know, there's a safe barrier there where cool. you're not in someone's face, but you know, face to face, everybody's super respectful, super, super cool to be around. And, and, you know, I appreciate it honestly. And, and, you know, it used to, I used to be like, man, I got to sign all this stuff. I got to do all this stuff. And it would bother me a little bit. And then my coach told me one time, he's like, well, one day you won't mm -hmm. one day, no one will ask you yeah. for your signature. And so try to live it up and, and enjoy it while you have it. And, you know, that was a good mindset shift and it's been good, man. Fans are, the fans are cool. And, um, I know they're excited too. When you look at this fight, I suppose there's, in, in my head at least, there's two ways to look at it. There's either an element of you get him before he gets you, or there's an element of I've fought 15 minutes before, this kid's never got, never got fought more than five minutes, I'll try and take it long and, and kind of try and, you know, expose that gas tank using the, the veteran kind of, t you know, skills and tactics that you obviously have. Of those two tactics, which one do you think will, will lead more favorably to, to the victory in this, in this match? Um, I think it's kind of a little bit of both, you know, I feel like he's a really fast starter, but so am I, you know, I get busy quick. And so to try to fight that is difficult, right? I need to be patient. I need to have presence, but trying to fight my, my natural instinct to just go after it is, is not, is going to be a losing battle. Like I said, that's overthinking and, and I'm not going to do that, but you know, the longer the fight goes, the more it does favor me. I don't feel like in the early part of the fight though, that I'm not favored, right? I feel like I can get started really quick and I have a lot of power. I'm fast. You know, I have, I come from a wrestling background. So me catching him early isn't out of the question, but also the longer the fight goes, you know, you just make him have to answer questions that he's never had to answer. You know, can he go for 15 minutes? What happens when people get up from his wrestling? What happens when people stuff his wrestling? What happens when he gets hit in the face? You know, he has a lot of unknowns and maybe he'll answer all those questions, but it's my job to make him answer them. So Meatball Molly back home, Molly McCann has, I think has just the record for the only fighter in UFC history to have back to back uh, spin and elbow chaos. What do you think the odds are would Cody Brundage to get back to back slam chaos in the first round? Well, you know Molly's Molly's my girl, and uh, I've known her for a, yeah, I've known her for a long time, and it seems like something we would do. We always joke, we're like, man, we're the same person, and I've known her for years. She trained with my wife, and uh, I was out here when she she uh, had her last fight in February, and, and we got to hang out, and uh, we always joke, you know, if I get a bonus, she gets a bonus. That's the way it's been our whole UFC career, and she just, uh, I think she bonus, right, in her last fight, so, you know, odds are looking pretty good for me. <laughs> I love it. Um, we spoke, obviously, in Austin, and then we spoke again on Zoom in January, February, when this, when this fight was announced, and I remember you saying something along the lines of, like, I'm not stupid here. I know that I'm almost supposed to lose. I know that's the role that I'm meant to play. Knowing that, and what, I'm wondering about what your mentality is going into this fight. Is there an element of kind of proving everybody wrong? Do you, do you, do you see it in those terms? Uh, so, you know, that used to be my mindset. I'm going to prove all these people wrong and make them eat their words. But I don't really feel that way anymore. You know, I feel like uh, my mindset completely shifted my last fight My last fight to uh, I'm just going to prove the people that do believe in me right. You know, I'm going to prove the people that put in the work with me and see what I do every day correct. And that's way more fulfilling and way easier because I could go knock out Bo Nickel in the first round and no one's going to give me my flowers and be like, man, Cody Brunish is a lot better than we thought. They're going to say, Bo Nichols is not as good as we thought. He's green. He's so new to the sport. All these different excuses. And so if that's what I'm chasing, it's unattainable and, and it's disappointing. Uh, so just proving the people that do believe in me right and people that have put a lot of time and energy into me right is is a more positive place to come from and also uh, easier to do, I think. And and so, yeah. And I know, I know what people think. I know what the narrative is on this fight. And I think that's, you know, obviously Bo's had a great – run early in his UFC career and, and then I you know I fought some tough dudes and uh had some performances that weren't to my potential still don't feel like I've had a performance that really matches my potential and so there's been some inconsistency so people don't really know what they're getting with Cody Brundage you know I feel like sure. I feel like when I show up and I have a performance that's complete uh I can be a problem for anyone in the division right but you know I just need to do that on, on fight night a couple more from me Cody and thank you for your time um Talking about the division, do you allow yourself? This would probably this would be the biggest win of your career, certainly in terms of name value. Do you allow yourself to think what a win over Bo Nickel could do in terms of the, you in the one eighty five pound division? Yeah, definitely. You know, everybody keeps telling me, you know, you have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. But it, one, you're trying to knock me out in my underwear in front of my family. So there's a lot to lose there, right? It's not like any other sport. Uh, Fighting is completely different. Um, but then also, you know, the only way you get more big opportunities like this is to cash in on them. And if you don't cash in on them, then, you know, you kind of go – your trajectory for your career completely changes. Not that you can't be successful, not that you can't make good money, not that you can't uh, have a long career in the UFC, but you got to cash in on the opportunities when they present themselves and you got to capitalize, and uh, that's how you get bigger and better opportunities. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot at stake, and uh, – you know, I'm excited for the opportunity, and, and I know what, what comes with a win for sure. 
last one from me. I can be as brief or detailed as you like with this one. I'd like you to give me a walkthrough of the perfect fight day on Saturday. I want to know what happens when you wake up in the morning to when you go to sleep at night in a completely perfect world. Yeah, so uh, wake up in the morning, have breakfast with my, my wife's here and, and my team, and you know just try to keep those vibes good. Try to eat some food. I, I have a hard time eating on fight day. Uh, so try to eat a little bit, and then I have a later report time. So I might hit a little shakeout. Uh, you know, I don't fight till probably around 7, 7.15, which is later than, than normal for me. Um, so maybe hit another meal early before that and then report. And then, you know, get the hands wrapped, hit a good warm-up, and, and get out there. And I feel like, you know, the fight is it's going to start quick when it goes. Like I said, he's a fast starter. I'm a fast starter. He'll probably, uh, you know, he'll probably take me down. He's one of the best wrestlers we've ever seen. But it's just staying composed and realizing, okay, we just work through this position, get back to my feet. And the more he has to take me down, the more energy he has to use to hold me down, the more his gas tank will drain, drain, drain. And the more desperate I can make him, the more likely I'll be to catch him and hurt him and uh, have the success that I want. So, uh, you know, I just think no matter what's going on in the fight, just staying composed, staying present, staying patient and realizing like, this is all good. Whatever it is, it's all good, right? It's going to lead to to what I need, which is him being desperate and me, me catching him on the way in. I love it. Cody, great to sit down and chat. It's, it's been nice to see you in Austin even better. I was really happy to see when you got this fight booked and knowing that I'd be out here too. I wish you the best of luck with the wake-up, best of luck for, for, for fight night. Yeah, I appreciate you, bro. It's always good seeing you.